Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Alright, and welcome back to part 2 slash 3, I'm just going to say 2, of Sekiro, the ultimate guide, and today is Harata Estate, so we're starting where we left off. It's which Harata is Estate Part 1. Yeah. Not to be confused with Part 1 of the guide, because this is Part 3, unless you're Tony, in which case it's Part 2. And not to be confused with uh, Harata Estate uh, Part 2, Part 1, but... Which is the next part, <laughs> which would be Part 4? Anyway though, <laughs> what you need to do is you need to go from the Ashina outskirts, and you travel to the temple, and then you... Go to the little Buddha statue and uh, interact with it and then it will teleport you here. So, um, like rest at that idol so you've got it in your travel marker and head back and get the pellet or whatever it was behind you. I think it was pellets. It was pellets. So you have to repel down here because if you just uh, drop uh, you'll take a whole bunch of damage. Take the fistful of ash and... Uh, Ignore that NPC I guess. This, uh, you can speak to him if you want, it doesn't really matter but... I think he tells you the time. Uh, yeah, he does tell you the time, actually. <laughs> no, he does <laughs> So, you jump down here and under the bridge so you can come back and get a carp scale. Carp scales are useful because they lead to a certain quest and item rewards later. So, what you want to do is you want to wait for this NPC, this uh, enemy to f go near the end of the bridge and then you can run up and repel up behind them and just backstab them that way. Uh, there's another patrol coming down um, and you'll be able to see the light slightly because he's like holding a torch. It's kind of hard to yeah, see any it comes angle. Th it comes through the walkway of the bridge. You uh, just sort of see a glow, and then you... Because you can see it from the other torch at the end of the bridge right now. I, d I don't even know if it is there. The point is, though, is it's I waited nice. enough time that he's definitely... Uh, Over there. Aye. Right, so yeah, yeah. So he isn't carrying a torch, just another guy, but I wasn't able to see him, but... He then got alerted or like made suspicious, so then you know that you can just go up and backstab him, because you'll see the, like a little alert thing. So... You want to bait him with a shuriken onto the bridge because if you go too close and then start making a noise or whatever, the, the guys up at the gate will end up spotting you. And uh, you can't be arsed fighting four dogs and then a guy. If, you, if, you're, if you've ever tried to fight four dogs and a guy in real life, it's really difficult. So I wouldn't recommend fighting it in any context. <laughs> <laughs> just stick a finger up the dog's ass so it'll leave you alone. <laughs> so... Uh, you see one of the carps down here, you want to like drop down so you're close to it and then you just do the, the swimming running attack so you just like dash Any forward Any good fisherman attack. knows that's the best technique. <laughs> you dive in and you attack the prey from above like a bear. So you want to be careful here, make sure the dog is walking away uh, because if, so just like kind of angle the, the, um, the camera so you can see the dog walking away, run up and backstab that guy. Ultimately, if the dog uh, catches you, doesn't really matter, just spam R1 until you kill them, but that is if what it is. If you strafed slightly to the side of that guy, you could have thrown the shuriken and then backstabbed him, because I don't think the shuriken uh, alerts enemies. Uh, I don't think possibly your not, yeah. Arm, I don't think your shuriken arm is a noise that the enemies in the game hear. Uh, point is, though, is even if you do get caught, it, it, at that point, it doesn't really matter. Shite it's only, ninja. It's only one guy and a dog, which is... Um, Easily, do easily done. Uh, the shurikens kill the dogs in one hit, which is why they're super useful in this area. Bear that in mind. Uh, we use that technique a wee bit later on. So we're going to swim across swim across to this uh, island here. You can see the carp there, but we'll, we'll get that in a second. There's two carps in this area. Um, it, it's quite weird, so I'll, sp I'll explain them in a second, but this is the pot elder or whatever. 
um, he, you can trade carp scales for items. He sells a mask fragment, which is a useful item later on. You get two mask fragments and then a third piece, and you combine them, and it allows you to upgrade your attack by spending skill points, which is good for um, dumping in excess skill points later on. So you can see one of the carps here. Um, if it swims around and you catch it quickly enough, you can get it. There's one on this side, there's one on uh, this other side. It's also a quest line with these pl uh, pot guys as well, which yeah. ultimately also doesn't matter. Um, it, but... Yeah, it doesn't matter. So here's the thing. This carp is actually underwater, but for some reason, because the water is so shallow, you can kill it. Um, there's a technique that you get later on which allows you to swim underwater. So if you find it hard to get that carp, you can just come back later. You don't need to do it right now. We come back and get it later in the guide anyway. So ignore the... Well, you don't need to ignore these guys, but I just get them anyway just because of the experience. But an easy way of killing them is just coming up here. As you can see, the shurikens kill the dogs in one hit, which is what you want. And then you can just uh, drop attack this guy freely. Why didn't you employ redneck fishing for the underwater carp? Well, just... Uh, put a grenade in the water. And <laughs> Drop a stick of dynamite in the water. <laughs> so, there's a whole bunch of items in this area, and uh, this is one area, the one part of the game, where we do need to farm. Uh, it's very quick, though, and you might also not need to farm if you've been sucking up gold and not dying the whole time. Uh, you just need to get a little bit of... Um... Oh, wait, no. It might not be in this part. I'm not sure. We'll see in a second. Point is, though... Um... Oh no, you do need to farm for experience, potentially. So you come up this part of the wall and get the items that are here. I think this is a sugar. Oh, you're going to have to farm for Makiri. Yeah, because you want nice. to make sure you have Makiri counter on Whirlwind Slash for going out the rest of the area. So you come up to this part of the wall and this is how you avoid getting caught. Uh, this took me so long to work out, so please like the video, or the, otherwise I'm going to uh, kill myself if you don't, because... It probably took someone five seconds. It probably took someone, oh hey, this was my first run through this area, and so I just So, come up onto this wall, jump onto this roof here. This doesn't alert the guards. Then, you need to use a shuriken here, shuriken this guy, so that way that he isn't going to spot you later on. Then you drop down here, and this bit can be a bit spotty. Sometimes the guards will see, sometimes they'll be alerted. Um, it's kind of odd, like... This happening right now only happened once ever on like the 15 fucking runs that I've done in this part. So I don't know what the fuck happened there. His pathing happened. Um, I don't even, that guy shouldn't even be there. So I have no idea how he got there. But if that happens, you can just quit out and come back. Um, but ultimately you should be able to just walk around here. And there's this guy here taking a shit. If you didn't knock any of the um, in, like debris around the area, it wouldn't have alerted them. Um, but anyway, we, this is a... Uh, so that was just showing you if you do get caught around this area, but generally speaking, if you knock like a little bit of the debris or whatever, you'll see that he's like, he'll, he'll get up from his like squatting position or whatever. Um, again, you know, if you do get caught, it's not the biggest deal, uh, but in this particular part, because if you make noise here, it will alert the other guards out in the front, which is a pain in the ass. Just wait till they like pass this way and then you can backstab them. As you can see here, I don't even understand how that guy in that last clip saw us. How the fuck did that happen? Never happened before. Random bit of variance. Anyway, so we are back. Uh, we've killed that guy using the shuriken. We've killed that guy taking a shit. And then we're going to go far on this side, grab this item, and this means that we don't need to get ganged up by fighting the enemies at, out the front. So it's uh, is what it is. Just a little bit of a time saver, I guess, or effort saver. Less of a time saver, more of an effort saver. Um, it's also um, a, a healing gourd saver because I tried to... Dear God, I tried to fully stealth this area, but my sanity just went, I don't give a fuck anymore after about four hours of trying to do it. Realistically, you can get it down, so you only need to fight three guys, which is significantly better than like the six or seven guys that you need to fight if you just ran in. So go up in this tree, wait for the wolves, and then drop attack this guy. Oh. I think you're just underestimating the value of ceramic pots. Oh, I've tried. I have fucking tried. <laughs> so, once we get rid of that guy that's with the wolves... Um, oh, Ungo Sugar. That'd help. Uh, no, it's the Gatchin Sugar, and I've also right. tried that, and it's, st it's still a pain in the ass. So we can kill these two drunk guys by backstabbing them, right? Then there's another third wolf. Sometimes the third wolf will be with part of the um, patrol. Sometimes you just need to quickly get it there as it's walking down. Some guys get alerted, and then we wait for them to be unalerted. Yeah, that, is that, the... that last one's more of a lone wolf. It goes off on its own and does its own thing. Legit, but it's so weird because sometimes it'll be part of the patrol. It just depends on how long 
it takes for you to do the pathing. But in order to get these guys back, we just quit out uh, just to save time. Because they will return to their own stage, but if you just, like, if they get alerted and you just quit out and uh, <laughs> load back guy, in. That guy just fell over again. So now what we do is we come on this roof, drop attack this guy, and then it means we only have this one drunk guy to kill and that one guy with the torch, which is extremely deal-withable. But if you don't do it th this way and you accidentally alert one of the other guys, you then have more, like, you have that guy that would drop attack. He's like quite difficult. He's used got he's like got armor and an axe. At this point in the game, if you get fucked up by that many guys, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Especially if you don't shuriken that guy in the roof as well. Um he just starts like throwing arrows at you, so it's it's just a compounding issue. But this way you only have two guys to deal with, guaranteed, rather than like X amount of guys. So there we got the flame barrel, which is a uh, shinobi prosthetic, uh, which is actually one of the less used ones in this playthrough. And we're just going to quickly get the... It's only useful in like three, yeah. maybe four encounters anyway. Definitely very useful for uh, two of the bosses, but um, outside of that, there's a couple of other things. It's, it's got a tertiary use. Most of the things that the the, the flame vent's good against, the axe is just better against. So. Except ghosts. <laughs> you get yourself a purple flamethrower for the ghosty boys. Uh, just to make a point, there isn't a purple flamethrower in the game. <laughs> No. Okay, so this is, um, you can do this, right? This is just to show that you can stealth this guy. Ultimately, you're probably just better off running up and bashing him in the face. But again, we've got such limited healing in the Hirata estate, and technically, this area is meant for a little bit later on, but you can do it with relative ease now, and it makes the Chained Ogre fight in the next parts of the game significantly easier. Uh, so because there's so many techniques are just kind of like quote unquote cheesing this area um, I think that it is it's just kind of fine to do it just now but it requires a little bit of finesse but that's why we're here to help a little bit of finesse a little bit of chaos aye and I mean if you aggro anything just run away and then reset it and come back or quit reload yeah literally just, practice just... It's, it's options left d-pad up d-pad <laughs> x <laughs> So go on that little bit of roof, drop down, kill the, the... You want to kill the guys with the axes and the armor first because normally the other guy that's surrounding them is going to be a bit easier. So we get him out of the way and then we run down here and get the shortcut. This means that we don't need to do that bit that we've just done ever again. We can just run up from the opening bonfire. Now, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are going to have had an issue with the upcoming mini-boss. Uh, don't worry, we've got you covered and it's called the axe. <laughs> Trust me, this if you've had an issue with the game... You're going to hear that line a lot. We've uh, you got are. you covered, and it's called the axe. Literally. You're going to hear that 90% of the bosses. So, like I said, uh, you want to drop down and kill the guy with the armor, because that guy there that we just killed after the guy with the armor was significantly easier. Uh, this guy is basically impossible to... Um, to die against, you just hold, uh, keep hitting R1. Not to die against, but it's impossible for to like avoid having a... Like, you can't really stealth him. You have to, like, just face him. But that's fine. Uh, get the coin purse and then get the axe, which is the best I, which is the best prosthetic tool in the game. Do not let any of these, like, oh, what's the best prosthetic tool? It is the axe. It is the axe. So, random thing that happened here, by the that's way. That's just your opinion. Um, Randomly, one of the chickens in this area aggroed, which has never happened before. Uh, so, again, just quit out and uh, reloaded in, so it, it reset them to their initial position. Maybe you stood on its egg. Maybe. Uh, so we come up here and then we use the shuriken to uh, to kill the to, the to kill BBC the BBC from range. Aye. <laughs> so you don't have to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so then we come onto this roof, get the coin purse, then we can drop attack another one of the cocks. Because that is what they are, right? It's, just, it's the cocks. And then there's one other cock that we need to deal with. A fox in the hen house, but it's a wolf in the cock house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is infinitely worse. It's an all, escalation of that. Uh, all the stakes are raised. <laughs> <laughs> so we get the pellet, and then we jump onto this roof, and then we jump over into this roof, which is a sealed off area, kind of. And then uh, this, this is the this is the peddler guy that we spoke to at the end of the last episode, where you can buy information off them because uh, this. This is technically in the past. Some, I don't know how it fucking works, but this is technically in the past. Yeah, you time travel. 
So we've got another bundled Jizo statue. Again, this gives you another revive. I absolutely suggest hoarding all of these items until you do Ishi Nashina. So do not use any of these items unless I explicitly say this is the kind of boss where you use these items against. We are saving all of these big revive items for the end, okay? That is the strats for defeating Ishi Nashina. <laughs> also, you don't need to have like any items um, like on your tool belt at all because when you pause the game to go into your inventory, the game pauses. Yeah. So things like the bundled Jizo statue, you just pop them from your inventory, don't put them on your tool belt or anything like that, there's no point. So we're using the Homeward Idol and we're going to come back here and then we're going to install our uh, two prosthetic tools. Because he has the screwdriver. Yep. And then we have to... Uh, so then we got the uh, the the upgrade text for um, the second skill tree, I guess. Um, Thanks, Dad. Yeah. And now we need to get two skills. Now, we may or may not uh, have enough. Uh, we need to get that, and then we... We did have enough. Huh. You did have enough for that. Okay. three points. Just enough. So that's good. We had just enough. So if you're die, if you've died a few times, you maybe lost like almost an entire skill bar or something like that. Just go farm some shit, and then you build that up in like no time because yeah. the game like y you just get this stuff really quickly because your power and stuff is pretty low. So you're just building skill points really quickly right now. Uh, essentially, it's like uh, how to explain it. Um, yeah, so you need to just make sure you have both of those skills. Um, they are necessary. So just in in terms of farming, just kill like do that run. A bunch of times um, from earlier on in the video. For the next boss, Makiri Counter is the absolute. If you can't afford one of them, yeah, get Makiri yeah. Counter over Whirlwind Slash if you have to choose. Absolutely, absolutely. But you absolutely need Makiri Counter and then you have to start practicing with it as soon as you have it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, completely, completely. Now, the thing is, is that if you're getting frustrated uh, with getting annihilated off this boss, because God knows we spent a long time trying to do this upcoming boss. Uh, so I'm just waiting for this guy to walk up the stairs and then come back down, turn his back, and then kill him that way. But if the upcoming boss you've ever had issues with, this technique should make him a lot fucking easier. But you have to do exactly what you see us do. Do not deviate. Stay the course. Do not become a hero. Just do exactly what the fuck we do. Be so a hero. <laughs> So, you can use the uh, axe to kill these shield guys, like, immediately, so it's pretty useful in that sense. Um, you just poised through that as well with the axe. Yeah, so that's the thing. The axe gives you hyper armor, which is why it's so fucking broken. So it's mostly irrelevant in Sekiro. So here's what we do. At this point, just at the end of the bridge, we go into our inventory and we take a Gatchin Sugar. We only have three of these, so you get three attempts to do this until it becomes infinitely more difficult, but you should be able to do this first go, if as long as you do exactly what we do. Take the gatch and sugar, backstab this guy. Make and then and then um make sure you have your shuriken equipped at this point as well. Um so then repel up here and then jump into these flowers. Then uh lock on, make sure you're locked on to the um the fire, the torch guy. And then he'll come and try and get you. Now, you've got the Gatchin Sugar on, so if you kill this guy in the flowers, it doesn't alert the other guy. That is important. But do not move outside the flowers. Don't go any closer. Try and stay as far away from this guy as possible so he doesn't get aggroed. So that's you. You've baited the fire guy towards you. Now you go and you backstab this guy. There's the boss. And we need to take care of this one last guy, which is easy because you've got the Gatchin Sugar on and nothing can see you. So, now, you run into this, these flowers here, and then you run up and you backstab this guy. And you like this video because you have no idea how fucking long it took me to work out this perfect fucking run. So kill this guy, and about this time your gatch and sugar will wear off. But that's fine, because you're in cover in these flowers. Then all you need to do is wait for this guy to have his back turned. Make, do not mistime it, because you're going to be fucking pissed off. Take your time and make sure you get it perfectly. Make sure... He has just finished, like, a patrol. Um, like, what's happening here? Like, he's finished a patrol and he started another one. You get the backstab on him. There. You've only got one bar of health to take off this guy. And with the axe, that is super fucking easy. And now you've encountered thrusting attacks, which Makiri counter is just... It's so simple. You see it and you dodge just about when the kanji symbol disappears. You just dodge forward. 
and you will step on whatever it is and that's it. You want to dodge directly forward yeah. into the attack and you will stomp it down and inflict massive posture damage. And now, later on, you can mix this in with other attacks, like leaping over sweeps and doing multiple massive chunks of posture damage in the one go. So, something to bear in mind there is I was just showing you what the Makiri counter does. If you Makiri counter a bunch of times, it'll increase his posture. Now, what you can do is just axe R1, axe R1, axe R1. Do that, and he will die. Um, the, axe is, the axe takes away so much of his posture meter that it is so overpowered. And as long as you've taken away one bar of health off him from doing that the backstab type thing, then the next bar with two heals and some pellets, you should be fine to go. If you mess up that first sequence in any way, and you, like say you run out of sugar, um, if you get aggro, if you jump off of the bridge right at the beginning into the water and swim down river, eventually the aggro will break, including on that boss as well, and you yeah. can go back. So that's another way to just break that line of sight. Like, if it really comes to it, you can just kill all the enemies individually. The problem being is that if you, like, run out of healing or whatever, then doing the boss is going to be more difficult with no heals. You can still always get the backstab on him, but with having low HP and low heals, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Uh, but remember, the axe is your friend. If you can if you can get one Makiri counter on him, and you just immediately follow up with the axe, R1, axe, R1, you should be able to hyper armor through all of his attacks, max his poise, and just kill him immediately. And that is how you kill that guy. And, and many, many other guys in the game. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Less Makiri counter later, but more axe. Anyway, catch us in the next part.